Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are back with the Scramjet Aero Spike or the Scram Spike and I've been working on a KOS script for it to control it right from the runway and we'll see how that goes but it hasn't been very successful so far so uh, I've made some changes but I don't think it's going to get to the Scramjet part of it but it's been a slog anyway because just getting it off of the runway is tricky especially since it doesn't seem to obey the pitch command it doesn't like to pitch up and you basically have to tell it to uh, tell it the pitch setting to set instead of telling it what pitch to go for with the cooked controls you have to use raw controls and say hey just pitch up will you please and so it's it's been a bit rough and we've been using raw controls for a lot of it. I probably have to just go with my own PID controller. I'm going to have to write one finally. I've avoided that for ages. But anyway, here it is pitching up and very narrowly, of course, avoiding the body flap. But it actually drops back down for some reason I don't understand. And then, of course, once it's got enough vertical speed, it retracts the landing gear. So again, all automated right now. Um, we are carrying more oxygen than we did on the previous try where I made orbit. I'm going to see if that's beneficial or not. And I might have to start taking uh, start from scratch with this. Uh, it depends on whether it keeps the engines on after I cancel the script. Uh, once it seems like it's not doing what I want it to do, of course. Uh, if it doesn't keep the engines on, we'll just start from scratch and I'll fly it up and see how it does with the hot higher load of liquid oxygen and I do want to do a re-entry test if we get to that. Last time we made orbit with about 100 meters per second left or something like that I just want to see if we can get to orbit with more. Interestingly uh, there's a lot of weird things happening with this script. One of them is uh, during this roll it's told to roll to 45 degrees but it ultimately rolls all the way to 90 degrees <laughs> uh, even though I didn't want it to. It hasn't killed it yet but you know it's not what I was intending. Of, of course, getting off the runway was a struggle. Getting it to turn properly was a struggle. It would tend to lose speed too much and we have to write a condition for that. And uh, we don't want it to go too fast either because right now we don't want to pass Mach 1 just yet. We want to do that around 10,000 meters. And here it's straightening out. It when it rolled to 45 degrees initially, it rolled really quickly. Here, it set the target roll to zero, and it's, well, it's taking its own sweet time getting back to zero. Hmm. Yep. Interesting things. I have separated out the RCS and put it back on the body, so now the rear RCS do work. Or at least I think they ought to work. <laughs> we'll check that out. And, um, yeah, so it'll be re-entry capable RCS at the moment. We'll see whether it's a re-entry capable craft otherwise. I talked about reducing the air spikes to just two, but it does change the look of the thing from what I was intending. And so I'll think about that. I don't know whether I want to do that or not. Or whether I'll just downrate the air spikes and make them lighter. So yeah, testing the KOS script even up to the point where uh, I've got it right now has taken up quite a lot of time, so uh, if you were expecting some other videos from me, uh, this is one of the reasons why I have not gotten to those. We are going down a little bit, but hopefully you'll manage that properly. But I have to say, it doesn't really go to the pitch that it's supposed to go to. Right now it's supposed to go to 15, and it goes higher than 15. Sometimes I think it's... Uh, reading the pitch as pitch above the prograde vector but then that's not how it works when you're launching a rocket so it shouldn't be like that it should be pitch above the horizon um, so I'm not too sure why it does that um, in order to force the craft off the runway I used raw controls and to some extent there's raw controls going on here too uh, but I don't know if I've done that particularly well. In theory, the raw controls should only try and fix things if it's not pointed at the correct pitch. Now it's at 15 or maybe. But then again, it's hard to tell because the program vector is very close to zero. 
or the velocity vector if you will. And now it keeps oscillating. But note that as it oscillates, it's not like the pitch control is oscillating a huge amount. It's like a tiny bit of pitch control does an outsized amount for the whole thing and maybe I should just limit the pitch authority on some of the control surfaces. There is minor vector control on the engines as well, but two degrees. And you can see that especially because it's wiggling, roll, and yaw. That I've just decided to set aside for now and I'll fix that later. I'm mostly interested in it getting to the right altitudes and speeds at the right time. Okay, we're about to switch to ramjet mode. I've set that for a 670 meter per second velocity. Uh, it's wiggling a lot right now. Okay, that's ramjet mode. And it stops wiggling when we're in ramjet mode. <laughs> so, that's interesting too. It didn't switch modes, it's the control scheme is not different. The control scheme is about to be different once we get to 20 kilometers though. And that's 20 kilometers. And here it has a lot more oscillations for some reason, uh, in pitch. But not in roll and yaw, that's stabilized. Whatever was happening before ramjet mode with roll and yaw, it stops when we switch the ramjets uh, to ramjet. And I've told the scramjet to activate it at 1350 meters per second. If we even activate it, that will be an accomplishment at this point. Okay, I mean it should be trying to hold this basic area in altitude. But with all the wiggliness it doesn't do a super job of that. And of course every time we deflect it creates more drag and that's not ideal. Unfortunately, the scramjet activation also has a altitude, minimum altitude to it, so we need to be above 26 kil uh, kilometers. Yeah. 26 kilometers and 1350 on the speed. Here it's trying to pitch down, but then occasionally when the script is supposed to be trying to pitch down, it keeps pitching up, <laughs> so it oscillates. But then. <laughs> Okay, here we've got the scramjet, and that's not exactly what I wanted to do with the scramjet. Um, maybe... Let me switch the gimbal limit off on the scramjet or something. I don't know. This is probably bad for the scramjet. Uh, it's definitely not supposed to be pitching up like this. I mean, it's supposed to go to a target pitch of 14. This is not 14. I don't know why it's doing this. Yeah, and then we gotta lose speed and we can't keep going like that. Well, let's just see what it does. I don't know why it's go rolling off to the right either. Yeah, there's not much going here anymore. Okay. So that's where we're at. Uh, oops, not what I wanted to do. That's inside the cockpit. Cancel. Let me try. I think we should just try from the ground. So I'll I'll take off with it, and I'll keep working on that off camera, and hopefully get it better. Okay, off we go. Okay, there's some unusable fuel, but basically we end up with too much oxygen, so I'm going to bring it back to the space plane hangar, drop it down to the previous amount, try to make orbit, and then try to do a re-entry. But I'm fully expecting it not to be very good on re-entry, we'll see. Okay, we are off again. Okay, ramjet. Here is spike intake open. Now we're 
jets off. Trying to be a little bit more optimized here. Slowly gaining speed here at 40 kilometers. Break even is 382,000 liters of hydrogen. Okay, well, we're not accelerating much better right now, so activating the rocket engines. Okay, scramjet is done. Intake closed. Okay, cruising right along here. We will make orbit this time. And hopefully we'll have a good amount for entry. And actually, uh, this a scramjet part actually has a flap built in that can be lowered. I just haven't included the animation right now. But it is meant to close up. That is a feature. Another feature that I intended but haven't uh, finished up yet is a uh, hatch at the top for docking. And I was somewhat dependent on how much room we needed for spare hydrogen. You remember in a previous video I added an extra hydrogen tank because it seemed like we could use it. Okay, so 246 by 145 and we'll circularize at apoapsis. But right now we are in orbit. We have 236 meters per second left, so improvement. And we look pretty balanced. Uh, we have probably some spare hydrogen in case we need to light the jets after re-entry. Okay, ignition. And shut down. <laughs> A very brief ignition. Pinch. Now I'm gonna try and use the shuttle re-entry script to see how it'll work, but I'll quick save first so that we can just use smart ASS if it turns out it doesn't work so well. Just for safety's sake, I'm gonna turn on the fuel cell. It's not too different from the mass of the space shuttle. So it has that going for it. I really need to use a name that doesn't involve the letter P because P also activates the atmospheric autopilot. Now our orbit is lopsided as opposed to the circular one that the script normally likes so that might affect things. But I'm guessing that we're going to hit other problems long before that becomes an issue. That's only an issue if we get so far that we could possibly have landed at Cape Canaveral. If we get that far, I'll be quite happy. It's turning quite slowly. And maybe I shouldn't let it use the main engines for this. Well, it'll be interesting. <laughs> we ended up lifting our apoapsis because of that. Okay. But uh, it's got something going, and we'll find something out about its re-entry. It's taking a long time to do this roll. I think I'm gonna restore the quick save and try again. This time I'm going to just shut off the aerospikes so it doesn't use those. I increased the steering manager uh, what was that? Max stopping time. Maybe too much but it's got to be more accurate than last time at least. Okay well it's taken a while to do the retro burn with the RCS but it's probably not too far off from what we need to do anyway hopefully. We will see. It is continuing to do it as the sun rises in the background. I don't know if this gets more drag than the shuttle or less. And we're gonna find out. 
Oh, I should turn on the fuel cells again. Looking sort of nice right now. And we managed to get into reentry posture before hitting the atmosphere. That's important. Well, right now it figures we're going too long. That's probably because of how long the retro burn took. That's not unexpected. Okay, we are below 100 kilometers. We're using a bit of pitch here and there, but not too much. And it's trying to do an S turn. As you can see, leaning to the left there. And that's also partly because the Space Center is to the north. Uh, it'll also help bleed off some speed as we're not slowing down as much as we need to. This is so far behaving more like the shuttle in 1.8 than 1.12. In 1.12, the shuttle uh, tend to get a whole lot more dragged than 1.8. Um, I wonder if maybe using the 1.8 script with this will be better. Uh, it's wiggling around and rolling yaw too. That'll use extra RCS. Probably we should reduce the max stopping time if it's going to do that. And the pitch is fluctuating all over the place too. I don't mind it using pitch, but I don't like it bouncing up and down like that. 80 kilometers in altitude. We are slowing down now. We'll see how it goes. And also the vertical speed is tending towards zero, so we're getting some lift here. If we weren't wiggling around, we would probably be all right with fuel, but I am keeping an eye on the RCS fuel burn. We would like not to bounce up so much since it's thinking we're going too far as it is. Um, probably not too bad right now, though. Our trajectory looks like that. And if we look at that, it seems like we're going to end up in the Gulf of Mexico, but the expectation is we're going to get quite a lot of lift, and we'll see whether that expectation is correct. We're still trending too far south because we came in after just one orbit instead of waiting for a day. We would line up better if we waited for a day. Uh, it's maxing out yaw here. Oops. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. It's maxing out y'all. That's not good. Okay. Um, well, we'll see where it goes from here. It was using too much pitch anyway. It's probably slow enough that it won't break apart due to heat. If we hit the thicker part of the atmosphere spinning around like this, it might not be in such good shape, but it probably would slow down by then. Okay, speaking of slowing down, I'm gonna try and take it now. Okay, I think I've stopped it from stalling here temporarily. Uh, even though atmospheric pod is on, it's... Ooh. Okay, maybe not. Okay, well, not the way I wanted to come down, but, um, well, like we're not out of the woods yet. Okay. We're in unusable fuel anyway. All right, fine. Oh, oh, come on. Okay, uh, okay, stay there. Right. Well, we're sort of close to Houston. <laughs> okay, I had the intakes open. I'll just close the intakes. Oh, oh. Oh. Its landing speed should be much less than its takeoff speed, so hopefully. Oh, we didn't even have atmospheric autopilot, huh? Okay. Well, 
I suppose the good news is it can fly, do stall, recovery, and land fairly well. Basically, landing is at shuttle-like speeds. Which you would expect. It's not too much different from the shuttle as far as its wing is concerned, its weight is concerned, or anything like that. So, okay, well, its center of mass might be a little bit too far back for the landing gear. I might have to shift the landing gear a little bit further back, but <laughs> uh, that's why it's perched like this. So that's not great, but uh, yeah, I think I'll wrap it up here. I'll try for testing. Uh, I'll restore the quick save and it'll probably take a few more tries. I'll try it with Smart ASS, but this is the state of things, and I think I'll wrap it up as far as the video is concerned and just do everything else off to the side for a little bit. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.